but we want to be the very best that we can be. We want to provide the very best care we can for our clients. And that's why we're here to support our clients using the professional only products, the practitioner only products, the pop products. Hello and welcome. Mentoring with Geraldine is a bite-sized practitioner podcast for naturopaths, nutritionists, herbalists and practitioners. This podcast responds directly to your needs, the needs of the practicing natural therapist. With interviews, herbal discussions, something business and something clinical each week, you'll get the variety you need and enjoy to stay motivated in practice. Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Mentoring with Geraldine and the Bite Size Podcast. Now, what are we going to talk about today? We're going to talk about POPs. They're practitioner only products. So POP, practitioner only products. Those are the products that as practitioners, we're the only ones who are supposed to have access to them. There's a number of reasons for this. And generally it's what's in them, the amount of product in them, where it may be activated, the fact there's contraindications or the combinations in the product need to make sure that we've assessed the client for all their medication contraindications and everything that's going on with them. Some things it's fine to sell in the shops. You know, there needs to be zinc in the shops. There needs to be iron in the shops. There needs to be all of these products in the shop. But when it comes to POPs or practitioner-only products, We've got more absorbable forms of iron, haven't we? We've got more absorbable forms of zinc, haven't we? We know when people should be taking them, the optimum time, the latest research. So the latest thing about iron being taking it on alternate days rather than taking it every single day. There's all that research that's just come out recently and that may or may not work for your client. And it's a case of juggling that information, of looking at the other information, asking questions and having a look at their whole lifestyle before we maybe choose a product or before we tell them how long they're going to be on a product. Because if we can get them to change their diet, which is one of our diet and lifestyle are our biggest portion of our business, isn't it? So once we get them to do those things, hopefully we can start weaning them off these products. Yes, um, practitioner-only products are more expensive. And of course, that is a lot to do with the quality. Now, with the practitioner-only products, the companies that supply them are supplying only us. They're only supplying practitioners. And when you think about it, we're not a massively growing market. We've all got to train, got to get a degree, um, or my old self, an advanced diploma. So we've got all these, you know, you've spent years. The average length of time it takes to become a naturopath in Australia is around eight years. So it's not something that is undertaken overnight. The people who eventually come out into practice often come out to practice part-time. So the fact that we have companies that are making such amazing quality product that we are the only ones who have access to and we can only give it to our clients on prescription is really amazing. And we're very lucky here in Australia and in New Zealand and that we have these product companies that are willing to do these things for us. And, you know, I could be sitting here spruiking these companies, and I will be talking to some of these companies and asking them how they do things and what they do, how they do it, why they do it. But that's not to say that I only use their product. My dispensary is a very mix and match dispensary. I don't use anybody's protocols. I don't like the word protocol to start with. Um, I don't follow anyone's anything specifically. I get great results by mixing and matching through my companies, but they are all POPs. It's very rare that um, I will say to a client, oh, you can just get that at the chemist. Some things you can, you know, inner health. Oh, go and get it. Good on you. You know, that is a practitioner only company with their retail brand. So I know it's a good brand. And if my client is a long way off from me and I know that they've got a local chemist or their health food shop and they can pop in there and get something, I will tell them to do that. I'm quite particular about the products that I prescribe, as I know many of you are. The products that I like to, be pre- to prescribe are Australian made or New Zealand made. I really don't like things that are made overseas because in Australia, we've got the TGA. 
and they're really on our side. Often it doesn't look like they are, but they really are, because they go into the facility. It's not a case of the facility saying, hey, we're really cool, we're nice and clean, promise, and handing the TGA a pot of the product, which is what all the foreign companies do. Instead, in Australia and in New Zealand, people from the TGA walk into the facility. Every It's a um, maximum length of time is um, three years. They have to pay... So the facility pays $1,000 an hour to have those people on their property assessing them. And then they don't do anything. They sit there and they say, hmm, what temperature is that? Okay, how do you know it's that temperature? Prove it's that temperature. What are you using to prove that it really is that temperature? What is your assessment? Let me see the paper. So it's a lot of work for these companies to supply us with product. And it is good quality because of that. They know it. They know they've got to jump through hoops to provide this product. So they really do jump through those hoops and they make sure that when they can, they're upgrading, they're using the latest research. They've, and what's in them is often perhaps activated in comparison to the product that's on the shelf. The levels of the product in there are often greater than that on the shelf. So, I mean, the obvious one is fish oil, isn't it? You know, they go to the, they get fish oil um, at the shop and they get thousands of tablets but they've got to take thousands every day kind of thing in comparison to the equivalent in the practitioner only line where they take far fewer tablets for the same result so but they will still be slightly more expensive because of where they come from how they're processed um, and all of those things so there's a lot behind practitioner only product but there's a lot that we have to do to be able to sell it to be able to access it and to give it to our clients. So when we think of going into a shop to buy something, so my um, my comparison is always going into the shop, you go into a chemist and you buy paracetamol. So the person behind the counter is meant to ask you questions, except you can buy paracetamol at the supermarket and 12 paracetamol in 24 hours can damage your liver. So... It's actually a very dangerous product and in the UK you can only buy a packet of 12 whereas here in Australia you can still buy a packet of 100 people still try to overdose on it and guess what they only get liver damage and they still live through the event so there's a lot going on with having any form of health product within a shop if you haven't got trained staff behind the counter so there's a lot to be said for things being in a chemist being in a practitioner's office, being in even a health food shop, all that, but well, there aren't any, there are now only two or three health food shops here in um, Adelaide, but they're all staffed by student naturopaths or naturopaths. So they know the product, they know the contraindications, and they're giving real advice in real time. When we look at products as well, so all of our training is different. So a naturopath, has got training in nutrition and herbs and lifestyle, naturopathy, because that's living by nature. That's what naturopathy means, living by nature. So they can look at the products. They can look at the nutrients within it, the herbs within it. They will look at what the client, as you know, what the client's on, and they will see any contraindications. And they will make those comparators. They will double check. They will look at everything, and they will make their own decision as to whether or not that's right for that client and they might choose something else. A nutritionist, for example, should be using a product based in nutrition. It might have herb in it, but it should be at a very low level of herb because they're not trained in the herb, the contraindication of the herb, you know, the things that can go wrong with that herb. With your um, herbalist, they're not going to be prescribing high levels of nutrients but they may well be prescribing low levels of nutrients in a product because they haven't got that training in those nutrients that the nutritionist has. So there's lots within the POP that we can and can't do, that we can and can't sell. And we have really have to think about our training and what we're capable of sharing, what we're capable of giving out. New products come onto the market. I've just had a new product arrive in the post from a company and I've looked at it and I thought, hmm, I don't know any of these ingredients. I won't be going straight out and prescribing this, even though their information tells me about it. I'm going to go and investigate 
the product, the items, ingredients within that product. I know there's no excipients in it. I know there's nothing nasty in it because that's the company's mantra. But the actual ingredients, what are my contraindications of that? It's a nutritional that's come through. It's not a herbal. So I'm going to go and research that before I give it to anyone. Whereas a shop product that might be similar will be touted as a muscle building product with a protein and anyone could buy it. Anyone could say, oh, I'll have a bit of that. Off I go. Without checking any contraindications, this company has sent out the information with some with minimal information with it, but it's up to me to go and check and double check and figure out what this is and whether or not I, I'm even working within that niche for those clients. Is that going to work for my clients or not when we look at acute and chronic because you know I do by appointment only but I do have a full you know dispensary in my office I have herbals there I have herbal tinctures I have tablets I have powders I have everything in there that I would give to my clients if I saw them on -on one-on-one and because they're in there If somebody wanted to phone me and say, hey, you know, I need this POP, I need this sleep tablet from this company um, and I can't get to see my naturopath. So I would then turn around and say, well, can you get a prescription from your naturopath? And then, yes, because you're in my area, you can buy it off me, but I will need to see the prescription. Otherwise, I need to see you as a client. You get a lot of those phone calls, people just trying to get something because they've seen it on the net, they've seen it in a group, and they just think, oh, that sounds just right for me. I'll just see if I can blag it and get it. I do. If I haven't got something, there are other naturopaths local to me who may have it. So I would ring in advance, tell them my client's coming in with a prescription, and can they provide it for them? And they pay them, and that works really well as well. When I have someone who rings me, um, the example for this I use is, and it's kind of not really relevant right now, I've got to say, but when people are coming in from overseas and they hadn't quite got their sleep right because they'd flown in from Europe or America and so they're, they're completely the 12 hours out, they're not sleeping at the right time and they're not able to get their sleep back. So I might get the phone call, there's nothing wrong with me, I'm not on any medication because you ask all those questions, but uh, you know, can you do something for me? And I can do a short, quick consult, takes 15 minutes, make them a herbal or give them a herbal tablet and, you know, to help them get their sleep back. But I'm asking all those questions, all those contraindications, I'm double checking. And if there's any red flags, I say, sorry, this isn't an acute consult. This is a chronic consult and I will need to see you in clinic before I can prescribe you anything. So there is the opportunity for acute and chronic, even when we're working in an office situation I don't have a storefront or anything like that I'm not going to have people walking past when we're learning about our herbs yes we go to seminars and we listen to them standing there chatting away about whatever it is and then spruiking their product now naturopaths generally will go to these um, events and we will think about it and then we'll go "Mm, they want me to put licorice and peony in that Um, licorice and peony and what's the other oh no well da 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 da, can work that out actually it's cheaper if I give the person the liquid tincture and this tablet from this other company so I don't have to use their tablet often people who go to the seminars don't have that herbal training don't have that naturopathic background and so but they want to sell product so they will sell that company's product following that company's protocol without all the background knowledge and that doesn't look so good for us you know, we're an industry, but we're a profession and we're professionals within that space. And so we have to be able to hold our heads up high. We need to be sticking to the TGA rules. We need to be sticking to our own ethical guidelines and our own ethical rules as well. That is that we don't. Um, so the NHAA, they're the association that I belong to. I also belong to ATMS. Um, I belong to ASH. I actually belong to a number of associations. So that within the NHAA guidelines, it does say that we can't stick with one company. So that means we can't use multi-level marketing companies because with a multi-level marketing company, you gain money from the more you sell. The more of their product you sell, the more money you earn. Whereas if I'm to, I don't know, what's an example? Um, a 
something for the face. Let's go with something for the face, something I would never sell anyway. Um, if I have people with acne, I actually make a aloe vera gel with herbal tinctures in it. The recipe for that is in the academy. The um, but or molluscum contagiosum for children. The recipe for that is in the academy. Those aren't out on the podcast. But when I have people who come in and so the person has come in and I've made a herbal cream for them. That's completely different to belonging to a company that sells creams. And I've decided that they have to have not only the cream, they've got to have the face wash, they've got to have this, they've got to have that, and they've got to have the other. Because it means that I am putting the sale of that product ahead of the treatment of my client. When a client comes in to do with acne or the face, I make them a cream that I think is going to help. I might suggest companies where they can go and purchase their products or um, items that they might like to use, but I don't actually provide them. I can provide them. I can look them up and I can provide them from various different companies if I wanted to, but that's not my training. If I was an aromatherapist and I was giving people aromatherapy oils, chances are I'd use an Australian-based company because I'm Australian. I live in Australia. I am Australian now, as well as being a New Zealander. So I would choose the best product for the client. And when we use multi-level marketing products, we're not choosing the best product for the client. Rather, we're choosing the best product, best profit for ourselves and we really need to protect our profession and we don't want to look dodgy and by spooking products from these companies we begin to look a little bit dodgy a lot of the time um, you know in the past a long time ago really not in the recent past there have been snake oil sellers and that's not us we are not fish slappers anymore we are people who read the research who understand the research who want the very best for our clients we're not there are yes there's always some dodgy people in every industry there's bad plumbers and plumbing there's bad electricians I had a terrible one put up a fan I had to get a new fan after he broke it and fell through my ceiling so there's dodgy people in every single industry but we want to be the very best that we can be we want to provide the very best care we can for our clients and we all want that and that's why we remain in the industry and that's why we're here to support our clients using the professional-only products, or the practitioner-only products, the POP products. M having a look on the front, making sure that there's an L number on the front, an OST L number down at the bottom of the product. Making sure that it really is what it says it is in the can, and that's what the TGA does for us. And the companies, and they work really hard to maintain those standards. And so I stick with them. I use everything pretty much across the majority of the companies. Yes, there are some companies I don't use. Um, a lot of not using certain companies has to do with distance and um, availability. I use distributors. I very rarely buy direct from the company. So the companies don't actually know how much I'm selling of their product. Um, their reps come and see me. I don't receive anything from their reps. I don't receive anything anywhere. I buy things as I should because I only buy what I need for my clients. Yes, I do get sent things like I got sent that pot this morning of a product. Generally, when I get sent things like that, they go free to a client um, or I take them myself if I need them. I'm looking at that one thinking, hmm, that might be good for my mum. But I'm not selling products that I get for free. I don't make a profit off them. Does it affect how I use a product. Does it make me want to rush out and buy more of their product? No. It did initially. I will admit that when I first started out, I was very excited and I think, oh yeah, you know, I'll get six of those and eight of those and because I'll get a discount on them and then I've got them on my shelves and I'm going, oh, great. Now I get to throw them away. So with the patient ordering system, I find that it's much, much easier to not be influenced by companies by their seminars because I will be ordering from the company from a distributor direct to my client 
And I would think that the majority of my clients, if we went through their prescriptions, you would see that I have four different companies, five different companies maybe on their prescription. For the herbs, I have all four herbal companies um, on my shelves. I use all of the companies that are making liquid herbs. It will be entirely on whether I want a one in one or a one in three, one in five, whether I want a particular genus or species of a herb um, and those sorts of considerations, whether I know that something's particularly delicious within a brand and so I'm just not going to buy anybody else's because, you know, my client is going to be more receptive to a delicious flavour, delicious being perhaps a personal thought with herbs as many of you <laughs> won't think they're delicious. Um, so yeah, that's maybe entirely personal. But um, making sure that I am fair across the board with all the companies and that if my client comes in and they're on a product from the supermarket or the chemist or from another naturopath, I will compare it with what I want them to have. And sometimes it will mean that if they've got an over-the-counter product, I need to double the dose of it to get the same as I would for the um, professional only product. And if I look at it and I go, well, actually, that doesn't suit you, then there are times when I've asked, not very often, but there are occasions when I've had to ask clients, you know, actually, I don't want you taking this because it's contraindicated. I've had clients come to me on hundreds of products that they've self prescribed and because they can buy online. And that is one of the biggest, biggest issues when you see your clients is they start Googling something. I say Google, but they could be binging something or something, couldn't they? There's all sorts of other um, search engines. So they search engine <laughs> something and then it comes up with something else and then it comes up with something else. So they go onto an online sales platform and it says, well, the people who bought this product also bought this product. So they buy them both. And they didn't even need the first product. It was just that they'd done a bit of a search, thought it was a good idea. A friend told them it was a good idea. And it's not necessarily a good idea. So a lot of our work is often reducing the amount of product somebody's on, making sure our clients know how long they'll be on a product for. So if I'm doing a bit of a maybe a gut cleanse or something, I'll be saying, you're only on this for a week, you know, two weeks. Then we're off this. You know, I need to build up the prebiotics in your gut. We're going to be putting in good foods. We're going to be changing the diet. But these things are slow. Can't expect somebody to go from burgers one day to kale salad the next. It just doesn't work like that. And that's part of what we do is supporting, coaching and helping our clients to change. So that is all from me today. I hope that you've enjoyed this and I look forward to seeing you next time on the podcast. Thanks so much for joining me today. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to the podcast for the weekly episodes. If you'd like even more support and learning then the academy is for you. Here you'll find part two of the herbal discussions, more clinical learning and case studies to support your clients in practice. Bye for now.